no flash photography. Um, with Arizona State up here, their locker room is open for 30 minutes from this point on. Once Arizona State's dismissed, so once we dismiss Bobby after the players go, St. John's locker room from that point on, that's when the 30 minute clock starts ticking on their locker room. So they're open for 30 minutes once Arizona State's dismissed. Uh, if you got a question, just raise your hand. We'll bring the mic around. You don't have to do it for every question, but just your first one, name and affiliation. And we just ask that for our transcription purposes, you guys wait for the mic uh, before asking your question. Uh, Formatics-wise, if Bobby would like to, he can open up with an opening statement, and then we'll open the floor for questions just for our student athletes. So, yeah, Bobby, I, go ahead. I really loved how we started the game uh, and, and, and really took control of the game. And, and uh, I thought our defense was very good. We, we mixed our defenses up some, and you know, our zone w was pretty effective in the first half and played very well in the offensive end. Four, I think 14 to 26 at halftime from the field. And so played really clean at that end of the floor. And uh, it was nice to have that margin. And, you know, in the second half, we, you know, in order to continue to, to play in this tournament, we, we understand that we, you know, we got to take care of the ball better. And, uh, but they have good athletes and they never gave in and, and uh, very instinctive, you know, uh, players. and really good basketball team so it's it's exciting uh you know to get this win and happy for you know happy for our guys happy for our seniors and uh so it's it's going to be exciting now heading to uh tulsa so questions for lugens and zylon only at this point right here on the aisle on the right uh lugens hold Rubino, devil's digest uh, just talk about the nasty fall that you took in the second half and do you think it affected your play from that point on uh, at first, I was, I was just trying to go get the rebound, and then he kind of he didn't do it on purpose. He kind of he went out for the ball, so I was just a little higher than him, and I just fell. I just fell, and then I'm not surprised. I, yeah, I just I, I had my knee and my butt a little bit, and I just had to like walk walk through it, and then I was fine. I was fine. Here in the front left, Chris Cartman, Sun Devil Source, for either of you, just uh, the decision to play zone and how you think that that, that went. It seemed like early on uh, you, you had them really off balance uh, with your defense. Lugans, can you answer that? Can you say that again, please? My father's. <laughs> it seemed like you had them very off balance uh, with your defense, switching up, going zone. They, they really struggled early on. Can you just talk about that? Uh, I mean, our, our scouting, we knew that they were a good team going one on one. And I just felt like by uh, going on the zone, it was just kind of hard for them to like get get involved to like to the play and then beat our one -on -one, beat us one on one because we had we had to help. Go around here. Here. For both of you guys, uh, not only playing in your first NCAA tournament game but winning your first NCAA tournament game, coach said that was for him in coaching this game one of the more meaningful parts of it. Just you guys getting the opportunity. What was it like for you? Lugans, can you start? Um, it was it was just great. I mean, we knew that at, at, at the beginning of this year, we we knew that we wanted to do something special, and then getting some some good wins like this, coming into a tournament and getting some some tough wins like this, it's just great for us. Silent. Uh, I mean, first of all, just being out there was just a privilege for me. Uh, it was an unbelievable environment, unbelievable event, and uh, as far as just getting a win. Um, I mean, I'm going to say that one's for the city. Uh, I mean, I've witnessed ASU go through so much in this tournament. And uh, to be a part of the shift in culture is just an unbelievable experience for me. Right in the front right. Carson Field, Devils in detail. This is to either of y'all. Um, not being selected into the round of 64, but the first four. Do you guys come into this with a chip on your shoulder? Uh, I think we keep a chip on our shoulder naturally, uh, regardless. But, uh, re I mean, we were utmost grateful just to be selected at that point. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen our video, but it was a lot of stress and a lot of stress and just anxiety, not really knowing if we were going to get in. So um, to be selected, regardless of where it was at, we were just grateful for it. Here in front right. Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic. Uh, guys, do you feel like you've kind of got the monkey off your back? This team won, won a postseason game now. It's been a while since the school won a postseason game. Um, I'm gonna say we didn't we didn't pack for just one game. Uh, we're we're really uh, locked in. We're really focused, and obviously this is a, a big step in the right direction. But uh, we're that we're not content by any means. Uh, we're we're hungry for more. And, uh, we want to take this season as far as it can go. So, Lugans, <laughs> say that again, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he had to chase Samari Pons around all night, so he's yeah, a little bit tired. Yeah, I'm a little. Hold Rubino Devils died to Zyland. Were you surprised that uh, you had uh, issues rebounding with a team that you definitely had a clear height advantage against? Uh, yeah, but I mean, uh, I can't have 
uh, uh, unbelievable rebounding games every game. So uh, you just kind of got to take what you can get. Uh, our guards, I want to say Rob had six defensive rebounds at half. So uh, that just shows that our guards are coming in there and cleaning up. And uh, I did, a, I think I did a really good job boxing out and keeping my men off the glass. So uh, I'm not really uh, too concerned with numbers as long as my team gets the rebound and we can go. I know the source. Uh, early on, you were scoring from the mid post. You guys are, you know, getting the ball inside pretty, pretty consistently with a, with a, with a sharp focus on that. Uh, can you just talk about taking advantage of that against a, an undersized team? Uh, in these tournaments and in these games, uh, you gotta you gotta exploit mismatches by any means, uh, whether that's guard play or big play. And this game just so happened to be uh, with us. So. Uh, me, Romello, Daquan, uh, we did a really good job in uh, getting post position. We knew they were going to be a smaller lineup, and we just tried to take advantage of it. Uh, I mean, I missed some chippies. We all missed some chippies, but I think that was a, a point of emphasis going into this game, and I think we executed that pretty well. Got time for one more? Right here. Uh, yeah, this is for Zalen. I saw at the end of the game you embraced uh, uh, Coach Hurley's brother. Um, what, what's your relationship with uh, Danny Hurley, and how cool was it to see him support uh, his brother tonight? I mean, honestly, I thought it was I thought it was Bobby to be honest. You know, I'm <laughs> no, I'm joking, but um, I've never I never this that was actually my first time personally meeting him. So uh, obviously, I've watched him since Rhode Island and at UConn this year, and uh, he's an unbelievable guy. And I mean, anybody anybody that's family of my coach is family to me. So uh, I just wanted to do a, a good job in embracing him and pretty much letting him know that uh, we, we appreciate the support flying out here. He didn't, he didn't have to do that, so. I'm going to top that. Zylan Lugens, thank you for your time. Good luck against Buffalo. All right, we'll open the floor for questions uh, for Coach Hurley at this point. Right here on the right. Uh, Bobby, you, you've called Remy Martin a, a warrior uh, lately. Would you, would you put Lou in that category? Yeah, I mean, he's a freshman, and for him to – deliver that type of performance, uh, pretty, pretty special. Just, just alone for, for the amount of energy he expends on defense. You know, he, he had some tough assignments tonight and really you know, chasing Shamari Pons around and then being able to, to make the plays he, he, he made on the offensive end uh, you know, just shows you know, how, how elite he is, uh, a player. And I'm, I'm glad he has the opportunity to show the country that on, on this type of stage. Turn right. Uh, Coach Trevor Booth, Devils in detail. You didn't have the size last year um, with Z and uh, Dort and all some of those guys in order to create um, the rebounding edge that you were tonight and that physical edge. What did it say to have those guys tonight in, in order to have that strength and play better in this? Yeah, game? I just think it's it's uh, you could you could run offense through Zylan and 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 even Ramello White early and and we're able to take advantage uh, of the paint some you know more so early in the game than uh, than as the game wore on, but it, it established. You know, a, a focus of getting the ball inside, and and then Lou is is uh, just a big guard that can move so well, and and, he, and he's pretty nasty on defense. So when you have a guy like that, you know, you could you could you know put him on you know any any of the top you know perimeter players uh, on a team, and and he's going to make them work for everything. We're here on the left first. Chancellor Johnson, Cronkite News, uh, Coach. Um, your brother is often, you know, coaching this at the same time as you. But tonight, he obviously came out to support you. What does it mean to you to have him show up and support you in this moment? Yeah, I mean, it's we're, we're so close and we talk so much, and, and I'm sure he's he, he was very familiar with 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 our team and our players, and um, just getting a chance to spend time with him this afternoon a little bit. It just means everything that that he took the time out and. You know he's he's recruiting and, and as his seasons end and trying to rebuild uh, UConn basketball and he's going to be a, a major success there. But you know just looking over to him, I got a little strength. You know I usually only have my wife uh, uh, behind the bench to to look at uh, for strength in some tough moments. But it was nice to have more reinforcements and uh, and and to get a chance to see Dan after the game was awesome. You know I I was able to to watch his, uh, his Creighton game a few years ago in the NCAA tournament. And, and it was, uh, I, I just so proud of watching him do his thing out there on, on the basketball court. You're all right. Coach, what about Remy's status? Obviously, he was not quite the same. You know, we know he's been struggling with the groin. How healthy do you think he was today? And, and it seemed to affect you guys' play when he wasn't in the game. Yeah, we're just, as we had control of the game, I was trying to, to, to get him in and out of the game as, as I needed because the last thing I wanted to do was, was give him a chance to, to re-injure himself and, and uh, re-aggravate that injury. So 
I mean, I thought he moved fairly well at times. He just, you know, he didn't get any reps in practice for a couple of days until the day before. So I'm sure that that had some impact. But you know, he's one of the toughest kids I've ever been around. And, and uh, you know, he's going to, he'll tell me he's getting close to 100%. I don't, I don't know if he's being completely truthful when he says that, though. Here in the back left. You, is it an insult or a compliment that one of your players confuse you for your brother? What's up? Is it an insult or a compliment that uh, Zylan confused you for your brother? <laughs> yeah, our mannerisms are, are, are a lot, uh, very much the same, especially on the sideline. And, and they, you know, I, I make those guys watch UConn basketball and, and Rhode Island basketball. Last year, I, you know, I had them watch how hard Rhode Island defended to try and get us to defend as hard as Rhode Island did. So I'm sure they, and, and they love the, uh, the handshake line with, with Syracuse earlier in the year when, my brother had the exchange with his player, and then and then quickly got back to business and and uh, and shook Coach Beheim's hand. It was it was one of their favorite moments, uh, our guys. So um, I, I I may not have directly answered that, but you know that's what I got. A chance to play your old you know, Buffalo and, and Oats, and uh, what do you think about seeing those? Yeah, guys I mean next? it's it's more for me just to I said it after the game. I, I just. I love coaching these guys. They're, they're such a fun group to coach, and, and they have a bunch of winners. And um, just we don't we don't want the journey to end, and, and that's that's what it's about this time of year. You just gotta you gotta keep you know keep making plays and, and attack each game. And you know I haven't really had a lot of time to to think about how I'm going to feel you know on Friday. But uh, you know Nate and I spoke, and we both agreed that we're really good friends and. We both, uh, we both helped each other tremendously in our careers, but that's probably not going to matter a whole lot on Friday. Last two here and on the line. Bobby, when you and Nate know each other so well, does that, what does that do in terms of the gamesmanship or just the XO component of a game like this? Yeah, we have a tendency just to watch our, uh, watch our teams more when we can, and we're both really busy with our own seasons. But Nate's only a notch behind how I watch UConn. You know, I watch just about every UConn game. So I try and watch Buffalo when I can and, and root for him. But, uh, you know, there are some elements of offense that, that I have that I've did at Buffalo with Nate, and then there are a lot of other things that I've done since I've gotten here. So there's been some change in, in, in what we do at that end of the floor. And I just know for sure watching Nate Oates' teams as they really take on his – you know his character and and his personality by you know how hard nosed he is and how fiery he is and his kids play extremely hard and they have a chip on their shoulder you know uh, the whole mid major thing I think they're they're tired of that so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a heck of a game. Last one, coach. Twenty one turnovers tonight. What needs to be done to cut down on that number as the competition <coughs> increases? I think we were a little uncharacteristic with with just being slightly careless and and we had the big lead and. You know, give St. John's credit for you know just never giving in and and really battling through that game and trying to generate those turnovers.